no man's land to remain untouched, more housing to be built in Blenheim, and the children advised of the impact of cyberbullying. Info update, bringing you the latest news, views, and, and reviews, reviews, along with responses, comments, and events affecting you. Brought to you by the Information Division of the Tobago House of Assembly. There are assurances that the Buku Lagoon and the No Man's Land will remain untouched. Here's more. Representatives of the business community and other interest groups had a first-hand chance to see the initial concept for the proposed Sandals development at the Buku Golden Grove Estate. Members of the Business Chamber, Hoteliers Association, Dive Operators, Environment Tobago and several other groups sat in to witness a presentation by the Sandals Group and also aired their concerns about the project. Stuart Young, Minister in the Ministry of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs, says discussions with Sandals are still at a preliminary stage. But we want to stress and emphasize at this point that it is a conversation that is taking place. We have not gotten down into details of negotiations. Nothing is written in stone. The stakeholders had a range of concerns from environmental to the economic benefits of the project for Tobago. Chief Secretary Orville London says these issues have not yet been discussed and assured that once this happens, Tobagonians will be consulted. And they and their team have come to, to Tobago and they've looked at a site. It is the Buko Golden Grove Estate and we have begun a conversation. Mr London has also given the assurance that no man's land is not being considered for the project. I'm Kuhn Freitas for Info Update. The housing development to be built in Blenheim could add more than 100 homes to the area. The Secretary of the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development, Joel Jack, says he is committed to provide Tobagonians with affordable housing. This, he says, led to several discussions to determine how best the housing stock in Blenheim could be increased. The size of the, this development it was designed to accommodate 119 housing solutions and in, in different components of housing units and other apartments. Um, but the total currently is approximately 59 units. So we still have room for expansion. Mr. Jack says this will be the second largest housing development in Tobago. He says contractors have three months to complete five new homes in the area. This is the catalyst of things to come in the electoral district and in, and in terms of the pace of construction of, a, of affordable housing units on the island. We will continue to work with the private sector through public-private partnerships and other financing modalities to increase the housing stock on the island. He adds that his team of experts are finalizing a plan for accelerated housing development which will soon be taken to the Executive Council. Tobago's youth are being reminded of the impact of cyberbullying. Here's more. The Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago is hosting a series on cyberbullying throughout Trinidad and Tobago. It's geared towards creating awareness about the dangers of this practice. The mother of a cyberbullying victim explains mobile phones can make it easier to be a cyberbully. We all have them. Our data tells us that there are approximately 1.5 million or more smartphones in use in Trinidad and Tobago. Some have mobile internet subscriptions while the rest of them we can assume you utilize internet hotspots or Wi-Fi at home. Police Sergeant Dale Joseph of the Police Cybercrime Unit advised students on how to be cyber smart. Use common sense when you post stuff online, and this goes without saying. My colleague Darren would have spoken about the hurt, and we saw several we saw several videos about hurt and what could be done online about, um, especially young people. There are well documented cases in the United States and of, of America of persons who actually committed suicide after being bullied online. The law states that anyone convicted of cyberbullying is liable to a fine of $50,000 and 10 years imprisonment. I'm Josan Brassi, 4 in 4 8. And That's it from all of us at the Department of Information. I'm Davia Chambers, and you've been listening to Info Update.